So good evening and welcome to our program. My name is Margaret Bile, president of the Federated Women's Institutes of Canada. One of our goals for this triennium is to acknowledge the effects of climate change on our nation. The communications and outreach committee have done a fantastic job of putting together a program to support this goal. Climate change is real. It is here and it will affect our children, grandchildren and generations to come. April 22nd is Earth Day and April 28th is Arbor Day. What better way to acknowledge both days than to discuss the effects of climate change on forestry in Canada and what can we do? At this time, I'd like to welcome Eleanor Lilly, FWCWI Canada Board Director from Nova Scotia to give the native land acknowledgement. Thank you. Before we begin this evening's program, we will We'd like to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. While we meet this evening on a virtual platform, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the lands and to give gratitude for the sharing these lands which we each call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis and First Nations people that call this land home. Thank you, Eleanor. I'd like to ask Lynn McLean, FWICWI Canada President-elect, to introduce our guest. Thank you, President Margaret. Uh, our presenter this evening has worked for 10 years in the private forest industry in the province of New Brunswick here in Canada. And during that time, she has acquired a good working knowledge of the woods and is an advocate for good environmental processes and practices. Our presenter believes that humans rely on the natural environment and that if we take care of the earth, it will take care of us. She is also president of the Unrefined Women's Institute located in New Brunswick. Please give a warm WI welcome to Megan White. Hello, everyone. Please uh, ignore my awful background. Welcome to my basement. <laughs> uh, it is mostly children's toys back here. <laughs> So I'm going to share my screen. Can everybody hear me all right? I saw people laugh at my jokes, so <laughs> it should be solid. <laughs> all right, I'm going to, okay. Perfect. All right, so I guess, there we go. Okay, so climate change and forestry, we're just going to briefly talk about a few things that I wanted to bring up. Um, I'm going to have this, it's going to be very informal, and if anybody has a question at any point, please just ask. Um, I didn't want to talk too much about, like, what is climate change? I didn't want to go that route because I think most of us pretty much know what climate change is at this point. Um, and we'll touch on some things, like, that we might be able to do on our own level. So first, I want to introduce myself. I'm Megan, and I have three children under the age of six, um, uh, two boys and a girl. Uh, my youngest is 19 months old and it's finally starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with three children. <laughs> For a while there, it was pretty, it was pretty tough. Um, I'm living in Carleton County, New Brunswick, um, actually in Glassville. Probably nobody knows about it. It's a tiny little place, uh, very rural. We have uh, one store it's just a convenience store thank goodness for it but sometimes you know you forget to pick up the milk for the little ones <laughs> so we have a pretty roomy yard um but since on the back of my yard there's tons of like woods and space it feels larger than it probably actually is um, i have a very large garden i only garden raised beds right now just for the convenience of it and we have some laying hens that are probably currently still outside around in the yard because they refuse to go in until absolute dark. Um, so I was born in New Brunswick 
I was raised between Greenwood, Nova Scotia and Winnipeg, Manitoba. My mother was in the Air Force, in the military, and she was a single mother with me for the first 10, more than 10 years of my life. Um, I have a younger sister and a younger brother. My I'm 31. My youngest brother is uh, only 16, just this past week. <laughs> so there's quite an age gap. Um, so in the past this past year, in November, I made the decision to leave the Ford Company. Um, I worked in it for 10 years, and I decided that it was something I, I always say to people. It was starting to make me a little bitter. <laughs> so it's it was very much old school men's world in the forest. Um, most of the time I was okay with that because I have a very strong personality and that's probably why I made it 10 years. But I knew a lot of women who um, were having the same kind of issues and I've seen, I've seen them leave way later in their career. And I thought, you know, I don't think that I want to do that later, I'd rather do it now. So now I'm working for property assessment in New Brunswick for the province, which basically is the same skill set, but instead of looking at explaining to people what their woodlots are worth, or for a while I was buying logs for a hardwood sawmill, now I'm using that skill set on houses. So it's kind of interesting. It's been really wonderful, and I really enjoy the the closeness to government and all of the bylaws and policy surrounding it is fascinating. I really think that the 10 years that I used for forest industry kind of brought me to a really good place. So I think it's been wonderful. And it's definitely still something I'm super passionate about. Uh, so we did mention I'm a member of the Unrefined Women's Institute. Uh, we meet virtually and plan most of our things and sometimes in person in New Brunswick. And I also help with New Brunswick Women's Institute. So climate change in relation to forests. We all know that an excessive amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will expedite climate change. I think most people know that's the general gist of it. And that's why we always talk about forests and why forests are so important because forests store carbon dioxide. So the carbon is sequestrated into the woody materials, you know, tree itself, and then its limbs, its leaves, and then back into the roots and earth. You want to learn all about carbon in forests. I do have this link and I can probably copy and paste it into the chats afterwards. Um, I see I have a chat message. I don't know, when did that come up? She's acknowledging that her husband is a retired yes. property assessment person, so. It's funny, that's awesome. When I, um, actually, my husband is a conservation officer. So both of us went to forestry college and that, but he always jokingly said to me, it's like, I think you picked the only job where you're like more hated than me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, probably, it's all good. I have a couple of good friends, it's all I need. All right, so harvesting wood. Um, I wanted to just go over some facts, um, more localized to New Brunswick. So new, in New Brunswick, people are always like, oh my gosh, we're clear cutting so much land, which yes, clear cuts are not great most of the time, but in New Brunswick, Crown lands are harvesting only 1% of their land, their forested land base. So, that is not a large amount. Obviously, we would not be harvesting 30% of our forested land base because if we were harvesting 30% of our land base in, you know, in three years, four years, we would be done, right? We would have no forest left. <laughs> so it's 1%, it's a, fair, it's a fairly small amount. Um, and I did wanna talk about clear cutting because I think there's a, it's very controversial. Clear cutting is not always bad. In some cases, it is the best harvesting method for a certain stand of trees. Is it great if it's a huge area? Probably not. But when you're looking at, say, a stand of fir trees that are near the end of their lifespan, they're really not going to be serving their, 
purpose, they're going to lose value as far as that goes, but also even with carbon sequestration, like it's just, they're just going to die. So it's not going to hurt anything to clear cut them. That being said, there's clear cutting methods where you can take the whole tree. There's processes where they take the whole tree and then they limb them out and then they chip the tree, the, the leftovers and haul it away. Whereas uh, the better way to do it is to leave all of the limbs and all that woody material in the woods so that it is at least going back nutrients to the soil. So, like I said, there's so many different harvesting methods and I could talk about that for but I won't because it's very technical. <laughs> but definitely there's so many things to consider such as the age and the tree species and those site conditions are so important. Um, and the biggest thing that I see that just drives me up all when I'm driving down the road and I see when buffers are not appreciated. And when I talk about a buffer, I'm talking about, so when we harvest land, we need to keep at least 30 meters from a brook or a wetland. I personally think that 30 meters is not enough. I don't know, that's in New Brunswick. It could be more in BC, I'm not sure. I would hope that it is because of <laughs> the, the terrain difference. But with some of the things that I have seen for as far as water and mudslides and things, I'm thinking that probably they also would benefit from larger buffers around water and wetlands and probably maybe even those terrains. That is one of my big ones. So tree planting, this is always a fun topic. Everybody always wants to tree plant and I love that. I love tree planting. We planted a few trees recently. Um, but one thing to consider is on a larger scale, uh, most trees are able to grow back themselves, right? So hardwood trees, if it's a mixed wood stand, anything with hardwood trees, it's probably going to grow back on its own. So most of the time, it's best if we wait before we plant. We can look at it over a couple of years and see if it's going to grow back on its own because definitely if it can grow back on its own, it's probably gonna do way better than if we help it along. So most of the time with my experience with tree planting, a lot of the trees basically were only planting. Um, the only thing about planting spruce is one thing is diversity, you lose that. So if it was maybe a little bit mixed wood, you would lose that hardwood component. And diverse stands are more resistant to disease and pests. So it's better if we could plant a mixed variety of hardwood and softwood. Uh, so if carbon sequestration is your goal for tree planting, maybe just even in your yard, um, there's some species that are better than others. Definitely, if you are interested in planting for carbon sequestration, oaks are always a really good option. Uh, they have huge canopies. Anything, any tree species with a larger canopy, usually those hardwood trees is going to be better at like that carbon sequestration. Um, also, white pine is a really good option and white pine is actually on the list of trees that are going to do well with kind of that, call it the crawl of the trees moving more northern, right? So they will fend off better. Does anybody have any questions about tree planting? What did you mean about the the crawling of trees? What did yeah, you mean by that? I know. Maybe? I was like, this is not a very good term. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as climate change and the climates get warmer. So for instance, here in New Brunswick, balsam fir is a very tall tree. But balsam fir is not going to sustain well in a changing climate, a warming climate. It's not going to do well. So if it starts to, it'll, you'll probably see fur move more northern and actually just completely die off. Right now they're seeing, they'll drive down the road and the highway and you'll see just fir trees and they're like completely dead. And nobody really knows why they're dying. <laughs> it's, it's um, I think it's probably climate change. They're stressed out and they're not adjusting well to that change of temperature and the change of season. So I just have some pictures here of 
like I don't know how many of you are well associated with your trees. Um, this is a white pine, the first one, and I found an oak tree. I love oak trees. They're my favorite. That's actually what I planted in my yard. <laughs> my husband was like, I don't want acorns. And I was like, you don't get an option. <laughs> and then we also have the maple tree, which is also a really great option. And a sugar maple is fa fantastic. And it can actually, if you tap it, what they say, one maple tree will, if you boil it down, will make one meter of maple syrup. Do I have anybody who's ever done maple syrup themselves? Awesome, <laughs> that's great. So planting trees isn't enough. Um, and like I said, I would, I would encourage anyone who feels like, okay, well, I, I, I can plant trees, but not very many. So what else can we do? Um, I just kind of threw in some points of things that we can do to kind of push for our governments to protect more of our forests. Wetlands are also really important. So if we could push our governments for more protected areas, that would be wonderful. I think our governments are already putting into place like they have goals for a certain amount of protected area in Canada. What do you want? So and then also, I think, like I said, the larger buffers on brooks and streams would be fantastic because it's going to help that water clean. It's going to um, help wildlife in the long run, and it keeps more trees in the ground. And also the greater diversity in planting, because a lot of the time when we're planting trees on that large scale, it's always softwood trees. And softwoods, when they're planted alone like they just they tend to not do well so the last thing I kind of have here is to listen to indigenous voices going forward we're all treaty people here whether we're indigenous or not we are all supposed to abide by that treaty and by supporting indigenous voices those voices that are calling for the protection of land water and forests I think it's very important um, it's very ingrained in their traditions and their beliefs, um, and Indigenous voices include First Nation people. Um, yeah, uh, you can find so many. There's a lot of Indigenous activists online, and you can find them by various social medias. Listen and amplify their voices whenever you can. That's very important. So does anybody have any questions? I also have my email if anyone wants to ask me any questions or has curious about anything in particular. I also. I have a question. Yeah. When you talk about the diseases and the pests, mm. is when we hear about different things that are coming and are going to affect our forests. Um, are those part of climate change or are they another aspect of our uh, international commerce? I would, so disease and pests are generally, for the most part, they're here. Some of them are native and some of them are not. So has anybody heard of spruce budworm before? Spruce budworm has its own little up and down, has a lovely little curve that it does, and it affects spruce and fir, and that's here, and it's just a fact of life. Um, there's also the emerald ash borer, which most people know about now because it has done a lot of damage, and I would say that I saw that predominantly when I was working for the hardwood sawmill. There was a lot of ash, just all that these stands of ash being hit hard year after year because you could see those galleys. So that's pests. And then diseases you have, um, oh, shoot. There's a shoot disease on red pine and other pines and it basically will start at the crown and then kill them off. And that's basically like a type of a pathogen. It kind of just 
is when it rains, it washes it down into the ground and it, then it gets splashed up and around, similar to like a tomato plant, right, with light. So there's always those kinds of things to do. And that's mm -hmm. really not much to do with climate change. Climate change is just another thing on top of all of those awful things that trees are contending against. Okay, sure. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Sure. So um, I just got back from a walk in uh, which I discovered uh, it's called Malcolmson Echo Park here in St. Catharines, Ontario. <clears throat> I started the Zoom meeting finishing my walk and uh, on the sign there it said that it was the most northern Caroline, Carolinian forest in North America. Can you explain the significance of that? Like, what does that mean, Carolinian forest? So I am not sure what that actually entails to you, but perhaps it's the type of forest and the type of species I'm thinking. So here in New Brunswick, we have a, what they call like an Acadian forest. And there are certain species that fall with that, underneath that. And that would, that to me, that's probably what they're referring to is a certain type of fear or a certain type of group of species of trees that stick together. And this is kind of as Northern as they go because any more Northern than this, they aren't, they aren't happy with their site conditions. So maybe as the climate changes, those trees will be happier up here. Whereas you were saying before the, uh, is it Douglas fir? Um, our balsam fir here balsam will not fir. be happy. I don't know about yeah. Douglas fir. See, I'm not, it's a hard thing to talk about forestry on the, on your, on a whole, our national level. It's so different from one coast to the sure. other. And I've never had any experience outside of New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. Um, I had great intentions after I graduated, but married a Carleton County boy. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have to say, I've, I've lived here for 71 years and I recently like just last year I discovered this beautiful for little patch of forestry right in the city and uh it's amazing with all the different trees and and what you're talking about um having the trees that were just damaged in the windstorms and they're just lying there and they're going back into the earth it's it's amazing the energy that you even just walking in such a, a forest is amazing so and I do apologize. I think I said, what do you want when I do was switching from my phone to my computer? I didn't have mute, so I apologize. There. It's all good. <laughs> so if, if I could just interrupt for one second, I'll let you know that the Carolinian fir forest refers to a life zone in eastern North America characterized primarily by the predominance of deciduous broadleaf. So, yep, that's what it is. This is basically a certain type of species that stick together. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks. I see somebody's put that in the chat already. So wonderful. Yeah, no, that's awesome. One of the things they were saying that there's something affecting the hemlock trees, and um, they're very worried about it because. They were, and I didn't catch the whole thing, but the hemlock tree pays, plays a very important role in the forest, maybe here in Nova Scotia, but I'm sure in New Brunswick as well. We're not that much different. Um, so I didn't get the details on it, but I thought that was interesting. I have a fair number of hemlocks on our property in the woods behind us. So, um, so anyway, um, there's. Yeah. Was it hemlock woolly really adelgid? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. There is like a little bug that does affect them and it carries a disease I think that and that is what's the problem it's not necessarily the bug that's the problem but there is um I can't think of what that is I feel like it's probably in the fall but there's okay. like you know when there's like all these little bugs that are fuzzy and they're floating around and they're like what are these and they like get up your nose <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those are ha those are woolly adults and they carry because of their fluff they carry that disease and then transmit it. Mm -hmm. So that could be partly what 
they were talking about. Okay. Unless there's another one that I don't know about yet. I don't know. <laughs> there could be. I was just worried about my hemlock tree, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So how do we push our governments? What sort of things, Megan, do you think, what other than the buffers, what other kinds of things do you think we would, should be talking about to governments about? Uh, I think tree planting and diversity and, and also maybe our government seems to have, or even traditional forestry, we try to focus on get as much wood out the doors, as much lumber as we can get out the door. And sometimes I wonder where our trees, like they grow slow. Mm -hmm. Trees grow slow in comparison to the rest of the world. We can grow a tree in New Brunswick here. It can take, if we actually you want to give it the appropriate time, it can take 100 years. And there's places that can do it in 20. So I think that if we tried to focus more on like the quality rather than the quantity, sometimes that that may be would be a little bit better but we are we're, we're so reliant on our forest industry in, in Canada as a whole so Megan I have one more question if nobody else is ready to go for a question um and I you may or may not know this uh, and some of the ladies might uh I've been to a couple of funerals lately and as a tribute, instead of ordering flowers, you can plant a tree mm -hmm. and they will plant it somewhere where it's needed, you know, whatever forest it's needed. Do you have any idea about that program? I have not heard of that, but I would be really curious about where they're planting and what they're actually planting. Yeah. Because it is like, I don't want to, I don't like to, Say bad things about Irving. I think that Irving has its place, but in you always see the signs that Irving has planted so many trees, but it's only softwood trees. And I always kind of like that really jives me because I'm like, we we are more than just than softwood trees. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I was so, but I would be curious. I yeah. would be super curious what they're planting. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Certainly when you drive from Nova Scotia into New Brunswick, heading towards Moncton, there's a very large Irving plant uh, where they planted. I remember when they planted those trees and they weren't very tall. Well, they're mm -hmm. good size now, but you're right to get their maximum. They, we need a whole lot more years. So, but it was mm -hmm. all, it was all fir trees. There was nothing else in it. And that's another thing, like we plant, so right now they're they want to plant spruce because spruce is like spruce makes great lumber. Well, what happens when the the disease comes along or a bug comes around that affects spruce all of a sudden and now we have all these sands that are going to suffer? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing like the fir. Fir was that way. It was it was top of that was what you wanted to plant, and then all of a sudden it was nope. We're going to just plant spruce, and the fir stands kind of they took a hit and some of them didn't even get tended. And we're seeing that now, even with some spruce where they won't do the work to get them thinned out and they just kind of leave them. And then they don't even get to where they should get to in their life. Mm -hmm. I see uh, Ruth Thomas has her hand up. Yeah, I was just, uh, I've driven through New Brunswick uh, quite often and um, uh, there's certainly a lot of trees in that province and what I see along the highway is like you said a lot of um, softwood so are there any plate like let's say they clear the whole area and it's all softwood trees is anyone planting hardwood trees or or no they just put in softwood again so if it's softwood it's usually a good idea to plant softwood back there because softwood tends to not grow back on its own as well. Cedar trees would be kind of the exception to that. Um, but no, you wouldn't really necessarily plant hardwoods after softwoods, but definitely I've seen mixed ground that's been planted like 
probably should have been left alone to see if, what it will do because often it'll come back in poplar or other hardwoods. Um, yeah, well, this often. one guy that I don't know, he's lives out in the in the back boonies, I say, and he just said, yeah, there's like there's a certain um like say all these trees are cut down well, then you know like after a storm or something well then there's certain <clears throat> weeds that seem to kind of come up and they're huge and then certain trees start to come first on their own and then once they kind of grow bigger and do their thing then there's shade so then some of the other little ones come in he said it's just a real natural uh, process so I guess that's kind of what you're talking about yeah often like poplar is usually first on the yeah. scene um birch is very often first on the scene uh, birch trees are very very efficient at feeding in around them because their seed is so light and will carry so far um yeah it's it, it they, the hardwoods are really good at taking care of themselves it's just kind of more so when you look at tree planting and then you're planting spruce and then because you're planting spruce and because they grow slower they don't compete well so then we're spraying them with a herbicide and those two things kind of go hand in hand they're uh, it's hard to financially plant softwoods and not tend them it's very very expensive mm. yeah i guess i figured if they that's their land like we're not talking um, crown land we're just talking someone's property that they own and I guess if they're selling lumber then they just automatically are going to want to plant more softwood yeah maybe I mean the markets the markets change so fast it's mm -hmm. hard to to really I plan yeah. <laughs> like when we cut we cut our wood lot um and we we just let it grow back uh, well I snuck in some oak trees out there but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah Hmm. So if I could just add again, oh, uh, yeah. talk, talking about that tribute you know, instead of a tree instead of flowers. Uh, this one said a tree will be planted in memory uh, in one of the following Canadian forests in greatest need. And they list uh, caribou forest wildlife restoration, Antsville fire rehabilitation, Trepan Trepanier. Wildfire re Rehabilitation, Cedar Hills Fire Rehabilitation, and Provincial Forestation pro Reforestation Projects. So sounds like it's going to good places, but again, it doesn't say what trees they're planting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, yeah, it depends on the site. They're probably, I would think they're probably planting the best for that site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have two questions, Megan. Okay. One one would be, um, how does uh, forestry stack up in Canada as far as uh, international trade? W where does it stand in the level of importance? And the other part is, in in such a strongly um, represented men's world. As you say, it is difficult for women to make their way. For the people in decision-making levels, such as government, is it just as difficult for the women in those levels to make make changes, do you think? Or what could we do? Um, as far as our forestry on the first question, I mean, it's, it's one of our biggest trades I'd say it's very very important for us um as far as like a number I wouldn't I wouldn't know I'm not good with numbers which is mm -hmm. probably hard to believe because I'm in assessment services now <laughs> but, but I'm like actual numbers I'm like I, I actually like as soon as you started to say that I started to sweat so <laughs> oh, sorry sorry yeah no um as far as that I would say like just it is it's very very important it's one of our very like are probably one of our top experts right so it, it's mm -hmm. very important um and as far as women in forestry i think in the private sector it's uh pretty tough um i'm talking about marketing boards and then probably like through companies like irving or um 
Katie Knackwick or maybe a Katie Timber. I think that sometimes maybe those might have been better. I never went that route. I always worked private forestry and for uh, like a smaller sawmill. Mm -hmm. um, it, it had its moments. I have wonderful stories and I met lots of wonderful people, but I think that if I had gone like the route of working for the government, it probably would have been a little bit better. It would have been easier. For definitely, I've noticed a huge change in like management of like New Brunswick. When mm -hmm. I've noticed a huge difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a sure. lot nicer and kinder, um, mm -hmm. more understanding of when your child gets sick. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that was a big one. That was the, yeah, that was always the bad one. I was like, you mean, and me and my husband, we shared, the, we shared them pretty even, split down even. So, you mm -hmm. know, but between three kids. Yeah. And then they just share it. <laughs> yeah. They just share their yeah. sickness. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, As far as like what we could do, I don't know. I wouldn't even know. It, and it was not even a lot of things or any like one big thing. It was a lot of little things over the years that eventually just kind of got to me and comments that just kind of like maybe were well-meaning. But then in the end, I was like, you would never say something like this to a man in the same position. Right. So <laughs> and how do you how do you teach? I, I hate to say that, but how do you teach? older men that they're not actually being helpful <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's it's a hard thing you're not I understand it was probably most of the time coming from a lot uh, like a nice place but it just mm -hmm. definitely didn't have mm -hmm. effect yeah I suspected as much <laughs> I think you were very brave for a very long time yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I just say a comment. Sure. Hi, I'm from um, BC in, in the interior of BC. So we have seen firsthand in the last 15 to 20 years, the pine beetle and the devastation of that. And so now we're seeing the downside of that. The mills are closing. And if it makes you feel any better, some of the old guys in the logging are getting out. They're retiring. <laughs> <laughs> So we're making room for more progressive people and different way of thinking. I'm hoping. I keep, I kept hoping that too. I yeah. still hope that for other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's starting to happen. And I think it's, we're seeing it happen here because it's forced to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, for sure. People, yeah. Yeah. Megan, did you study at university in New Brunswick? No, I actually went to what's called the Maritime College of Forest Technology. It yes. was known first as Ranger School. It's been okay. it was initially for creating like forest rangers. Okay. Um, but now it's it's different. It's a two year program, just one year program. Sure. But yeah, I, that's what I took. Yes. Okay. Well, thank it's you. It's very. It was very much instead of like a like a, a school at the time it was more like eight to five job it was not okay. and then you went home and, or you went back to your room and studied <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was intense yeah 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 and where is it located it's in Fredericton it's actually okay like right adjacent to the forestry complex okay okay yeah. I wondered about that yes I have a, a cousin who studied there as well yeah awesome. yeah and I know it was very difficult to get through. It was challenging. There was a lot. To, it, I always felt like I always did relatively well without having to try very hard. And then when I went there, it was like I would study for one thing and then like my grades would start to slip in another thing. And I'd be like, it was just trying to balance it all. But yeah, it's good, though. Yeah, good. Well, thank you so much tonight, Megan. Are there any other questions? 
I was just going to make a comment, and if there's somebody yeah. from Quebec, maybe they can elaborate on this. This was in the news um, maybe a year or so ago, because as we know, the agriculture industry has been taking a real hit about being the, the worst culprits as far as emissions for carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, right? And that the farmers need to get their act together. Well, we are now seeing all kinds of ads and this is what the dairy farmers are doing. This is what all the farmers are doing in the country. But at the same time, there was a comment made about the forestry industry that they, in fact, because of the machines that they use and what the pollution they're putting in the air is actually stronger than the dairy industry. But because of... I think it's because of the the trading part of the of the industry. It got downplayed, and they didn't really want to bring that to the forefront. So, so how do you, you know how do we go about getting all the right statistics, right? So it's uh, looking at all the. It's not just one industry; it's a whole lot of industries. But anyway, I thought that was an interesting uh, situation that got put in the paper. So that is interesting. My, I guess, my first thought on that is like. Who cares? It's all bad. Let's move forward. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I get frustrated yeah, by that a little bit. It's always like, who's worse? <laughs> like, does it matter? <laughs> Let's try to be better. <laughs> so what do we need to do to be better? Right? Yeah, exactly. Give me advice on what we can do next. How I always feel about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. If there are no more questions, I'm delighted to say thank you so much, Megan, for joining us tonight and telling us your perspective and adventures um, in the industry. Um, and I think that it's always important for us to, to look forward to the future and see what's mm -hmm. happening next. So, um, so it, by all means, keep us up to date on what happens in your future because we're very interested. Thank you. I will. <laughs> oh, oh, you're welcome. And I have a little gift for you when I see you next. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just like to add, Megan, thank you so much. Um, you've given us a lot of food for thought. There were some things in here that uh, in your discussion that I wasn't aware of as uh, like the crawl of the trees going uh, farther further north and the fact that we need to think of more hardwoods when we're planting. So a lot of food for thought and, and we really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I found it very enjoyable and thank you, Megan. I'm glad. I really appreciate the so, time being here. So talk about your branch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, find. It's it's slow going. Um, it's a lot of younger women with children. So we kind of are strapped for time where we do small things here and there. We do a, right now, kind of what we have on the go, we have a bin that's um, all donated baby items that are gently used, lots of blankets and things like that. Um, it's going to be kind of a rolling bin. We give it to one person, they take what they need back what they don't give it to the next person uh we're also doing the same with women's clothing and then we tried a book club that didn't work we're all too busy for that <laughs> and we what else have we done uh, right now we're working on trying to find a space for children to play with to play some music and do some movement and then also have babysitters and then the women can just like go over here and enjoy themselves <laughs> and then also get to know your babysitter because sometimes I think in this day and age it's really nice to um have a few conversations with a babysitter before you let them in your home all supervised mm -hmm. <laughs> there is an FWIC book club that meets once a month that is great if, yeah. If anybody's interested in that. Hmm. Yeah. But and that's interesting because I know Ontario's trying to get um, an online um, WI going. So, yeah, be interesting. 
I wanted to ask a question on the book club because I was, but one girl wanted to join your next meeting because of the book that you read. And Anne Marie said, I'll just send you my link. But I said, you better ask the ladies because that might not work sharing a link. So if you could answer that, then that would help. Mm -hmm. I um, guess that would be for Margaret then. I don't know who, who can answer the question, but Anne Marie sent her link to um, this lady. Myrtle. Think. No, Myrtle. no, it wasn't Myrtle, Barb. Okay. Oh, and, no, no, no. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And because she loved, because, oh, it was something to do with uh, Maud Montgomery. Society. She, yeah. She was a member of the Lucy Maud Montgomery Society. But we could share that um, book link with anybody, isn't it? It's an open group. Mm -hmm. Lynn saying yes. Yes, yes you can share that. Absolutely. Sorry, go ahead, Lynn. No, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm nodding because yes, you can share it. So <laughs> as long as you don't put it in a public posted, but you're welcome to share the links for any okay. of our events um, that you okay, want to. Yeah, so and between members. Yeah, and between. Well, yes. Tomorrow and tomorrow yeah. night's the next book, right, Angela? So what's yes, Robert, that's correct. Robert it's Munch a, is tomorrow night. So yes, it's the uh, hist not history, but the um, oh, the biography. biography. Yeah, yeah. You can also find uh, information on how to join the book club on the FWIC website under upcoming events. There's the contact information. What's coming up next? And there we go. Kind of off topic, but no, 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 it's good information to share. Nope. And the next book is The Women Talking, isn't it, Angela, for May? Yeah, yes, that's correct. I see Liz has her hand up. Yes, I do. Um, I've got to give credit to Megan for start being involved in a virtual branch and that there are young women in there. Uh, as some of you might know, Manitoba does also have a virtual branch. But it's right now it's made up of members that are not associated with the in-person branches, if you want to call it, because they're sort of individual members. So we've been going since last fall. So um, actually, the branch put in two resolutions for this uh, upcoming AGM. So I, I give uh, kudos to, to Megan for being involved in a virtual group. Yes. And that they're yes. young. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was my my whole yeah. <laughs> comment. It's it's young. like planting trees. You have to start with the young ones and then they grow and they blossom. <laughs> yeah, the saplings. <laughs> As so I Barbara. say, bring a bar in, you'll get the young people. That's how <laughs> that one well, that's the first WI I started with. We met in a bar. That was our um place and it was it's worked great, and it's again the young people, not exclusively, but yeah. That's the the women inspiring women. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was a I, great first meeting. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I see Barbara Weiss has her hand up. Okay, I was just going to say to Megan, if you're looking for mother taught type programs. I, in Ontario, the public libraries are a great place to start. Some of the early year centers do that too, but um, the li libraries tend to have them. Um, could be crafts. If there's a demand and there's somebody to do it, which is often the challenge, they do do a lot of music and movement programs mm -hmm. for children. Uh, sometimes they're mother taught in or action but quite often the library staff take the children and moms get to hang out or have a program or whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah we we have lots of like library crafts or like book readings but okay. there's not and they even do like puppet shows and things like that but i don't in our area specifically too it's very rural there's there's no in, in Woodstock, which is about 30 minutes away from me, they have like a gymnasium that they have set up with like mm -hmm. bounce things for kids. But there's no like kind of more structured 
music emphasis on instruments and that was really mm -hmm. kind of what my kids love it we have a person who does it for my daycare with my kids mm -hmm. and literally like my my daughter will like cry on her way to daycare most mm -hmm. days of the week <laughs> but if it is a music day she she's the first one out the door <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it just goes to show you what those enriched programs do for the young people. For sure. Mm. So I see we're coming up on the hour. But before we go, I just like to let you know about a couple of uh, upcoming events. So mark your calendars for July the 11th is the FWIC AGM will be held hybrid. So there will be on site in in. Uh, St. George, Ontario, and we will be uh, live on Zoom as well. And save the date, September 17th, 18th, and 19th in 2024 in Truro, Nova Scotia. More details to come. So save those dates, please. Yeah. Lynn, did you want to add anything? Well, what I was thinking about is if they have any suggestions about what kind of presentations um, you would like to see next year. Um, what is of interest? What's of value? Uh, we would be most interested in your input. You know, we've done a few things. We've done what for this year. And um, it's nice to know, you know, were these worthwhile? Did, did you learn something? How do we how do we promote more of this? And what is it you want us to do? We want to be doing the right kinds of things to support the members and the provinces. Doreen wants those dates again. So um, it's July 11th is the um, is the AGM for FWIC, WI Canada in July, our yearly meeting. And then in 2024, we're going to have a national convention um, in person. We haven't had one of those since 2018 in Winnipeg, and it will be here in lovely Nova Scotia. So mm -hmm. Canada's Ocean Playground. So in 2024, September the 17th through to the 19th. So, so the board may be in here ahead of time, uh, maybe the day before. And uh, we're looking at what kinds of things we can uh, offer you when you're here in Nova Scotia. So. Great. I think Sheila's got a chat in there. Chat there. What would your friend talk about, Sheila? Uh, oh dear, I should have mentioned this when she was still here. She just left. <laughs> 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 she speaks brilliantly on um, advocacy, and she she's a, a, an English woman from um, from Holland and uh, has. Um, came over immigrated with her pa parents and family when she was around three and uh, grew up in Quebec City so she's fluently bi bilingual and um, although she did go to an English school in Quebec City English um, Quebec high school but since then she has worked for the government and done lots of advocacy work for uh, people with disabilities and she is still advocating for empowerment of women in, uh, she's going to Benin. She's been to Tunisia this past year. She is a former mayor of our municipality. She is quite the gal and uh, she has been asked to speak for several um, organizations that she is um, part of here in, in Quebec. One of them being a group of women called Les Pépines which is a French organization. And here she is an English lady <laughs> and they wanted her to be their president. And uh, she speaks and, and, and talks in, in different uh, associations around here. So I'm sure you would find her absolutely brilliant. And I don't know, I've mentioned to her before that I would ask her to speak sometime for FWIC. I'm sure you would love her. She speaks up for people with disabilities because she does only have one arm. She has grown up with a lot of um, what do you what do you call it when people are against you, um, well bullying and also um, you know disrespect. But she is 
a great woman in her own right and has managed to uh, overcome all that and has made quite the name for herself. So um, I would like to put her name forward as a, a potential speaker and I will get her CV or whatever for you to look at, see if you'd be interested in, in, uh, in having her. Sounds good. Thanks, yeah. Sheila. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Joan. <laughs> Her name's Joan Westland Eby. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably out there in Google land somewhere. Yeah. What's the last West name? Weston. Westland, W-E-S-T-L-A-N-D, oh, Eby, E-B-Y. Okay. E-B-Y. E yeah, she's probably, we can find her Googling her, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you Megan. Bye-bye. You got other Good ideas, night. send them along. Okay. Thanks, Megan. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Doreen wants those dates again. So um, it's July 11th is the um, is the AGM for FWIC, WI Canada in July, our yearly meeting. And then in 2024, we're going to have a national convention um, in person. We haven't had one of those since 2018 in Winnipeg, and it will be here in lovely Nova Scotia, so mm -hmm. Canada's ocean playground. So in 2024, September the 17th through to the 19th. So, so the board may be in here ahead of time, uh, maybe the day before, and uh, we're looking at what kinds of things we can uh, offer you when you're here in Nova Scotia, so. Great. I think Sheila's got a chat in there. Chat there. What would your friend talk about, Sheila? Uh, oh dear, I should have mentioned this when she was still here, she just left. <laughs> <laughs> she speaks brilliantly on um, advocacy and she she's a, a, an English woman from, um, from Holland and has uh, came over, immigrated with her pa parents and family when she was around three and uh, grew up in Quebec City. So she's fluently bi bilingual. And um, although she did go to an English school in Quebec City, English um, Quebec High School, but since then she has worked for the government and done lots of advocacy work for uh, people with disabilities. And she is still advocating for empowerment of women in, uh, she's going to Benin. She's been to Tunisia this past year. She is a former mayor of our municipality. She is quite the gal. And uh, she has been asked to speak for several um, organizations that she is um, part of here in, in Quebec. One of them being a group of women called Les Pepin, which is a French organization. And here she is an English lady. <laughs> And they wanted her to be their president. And uh, she speaks and, and, and talks in, in different uh, associations around here. So I'm sure you would find her absolutely brilliant. And I don't know, I've mentioned to her before that I would ask her to speak sometime for FWIC. I'm sure you would love her. She speaks up for people with disabilities because she does only have one arm. Mm -hmm. She has grown up with a lot of, um, what, do you, what do you call it when people are against you? Um, well, bullying and also, um, you know, disrespect. But she is a great woman in her own right and has managed to uh, overcome all that and has made quite the name for herself. So um, I would like to put her name forward as a, a potential speaker and I will get her CV or whatever for you to look at, see if you'd be interested in in, uh, in having her. Sounds good. Thanks, yeah. Sheila. Yeah. You're welcome. You. <laughs> You're welcome, Joan. <laughs> her name's Joan Westland Eby. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably out there in Google land somewhere. Yeah. What's the last well, name? Weston. Westland, W-E-S-T-L-A-N-D, oh, Eby, okay. E-B-Y. E B Y. Yeah, she's probably we can find her Googling her. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Good night.
Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Megan. Bye-bye. You got other Good ideas, night. send them along. Okay. Thanks, Megan. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Working for the government, it probably would have been a little bit better. It would have been easier. For definitely, I've noticed a huge change in like management of like this New Brunswick. When I, I've noticed a huge difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a sure. lot nicer and kinder, um, mm -hmm. more understanding of when your child gets sick. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That was a big one. That was the, yeah, that was always the bad one. I was like, you mean, and me and my husband, we shared, the, we shared them pretty even, split down even. So, you mm -hmm. know, but between three kids. Yeah. And then they just share it. <laughs> yeah. They just share their yeah. sickness. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as like what we could do, I don't know. I wouldn't even know. It, and it was not even a lot of things or any like one big thing. It was a lot of little things over the years that eventually just kind of got to me and comments that just kind of like maybe were well-meaning, but then in the end, I was like, you would never say something like this to a man in the same position. Right. So, <laughs> and how do you, how do you teach? I, I hate to say that, but how do you teach older men that they're not actually being helpful? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's it's a hard thing you're not I understand it was probably most of the time coming from a lot uh, like a nice place but it just mm -hmm. definitely didn't have an effect yeah I suspected as much <laughs> I think you were very brave for a very long time yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> I just say a comment Sure. Hi, I'm from um, BC in, in the interior of BC. So we have seen firsthand in the last 15 to 20 years, the pine beetle and the devastation of that. And so now we're seeing the downside of that. The mills are closing. And if it makes you feel any better, some of the old guys in the logging are getting out. They're retiring. <laughs> <laughs> so we're making room for more progressive people and different way of thinking, I'm hoping. I keep, I kept hoping that too. I yeah. still hope that for other people. <laughs> yeah, I think it's starting to happen. And I think it's, we're seeing it happen here because it's forced to happen. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, for sure. People, yeah. Yeah. Megan, did you study at University of New Brunswick? No, I actually went to what's called the Maritime College of Forest Technology. It yes. was known first as Ranger School. It's been okay. it initially for creating like forest rangers. Okay. Um, but now it's it's different. It's a two year program, just one year program. Sure. But yeah, I, that's what I took. Yes. Okay. Well, thank it's you. It's very. It was very much instead of like a like a, a school at the time. It was more like eight to five job it was not okay. and then you went home and, or you went back to your room and studied <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was intense yeah 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 and where is it located it's in Fredericton it's actually okay like right adjacent to the forestry complex okay okay yeah. I wondered about that yes I have a, a cousin who studied there as well yeah awesome. yeah and I know it was very difficult to get through. It was challenging. There was a lot. To, it, I always felt like I always did relatively well without having to try very hard. And then when I went there, it was like I would study for one thing and then like my grades would start to slip in another thing. And I'd be like, it was just trying to balance it all. But yeah, it's good, though. Yeah, good. Well, thank you so much tonight, Megan. Are there any other questions? I was just going to make a comment. And if there's somebody yeah. from Quebec, maybe they can elaborate on this. This was in the news um, maybe a year or so ago, because as we know, the agriculture industry has been taking a real hit about being the, the worst culprits as far as 
emissions for carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, right? And that the farmers need to get their act together. Well, we are now seeing all kinds of ads and this is what the dairy farmers are doing. This is what all the farmers are doing in the country. But at the same time, there was a comment made about the forestry industry that they, in fact, because of the machines that they use and what the pollution they're putting in the air is actually stronger than the dairy industry. But because of... I think it's because of the the trading part of the of the industry. It got downplayed, and they didn't really want to bring that to the forefront. So, so how do you, you know how do we go about getting all the right statistics, right? So it's uh, looking at all the. It's not just one industry; it's a whole lot of industries. But anyway, I thought that was an interesting uh, situation that got put in the paper. So that is interesting. My, I guess, my first thought on that is like. Who cares? It's all bad. Let's move forward. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I get frustrated yeah, by that a little bit. It's always like, who's worse? <laughs> like, does it matter? <laughs> Let's try to be better. <laughs> so what do we need to do to be better? Right? Yeah, exactly. Give me advice on what we can do next. How I always feel about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. If there are no more questions, I'm delighted to say thank you so much, Megan, for joining us tonight and telling us your perspective and adventures um, in the industry. Um, and I think that it's always important for us to to look forward to the future and see what's mm-hmm. happening next. So, um, so it, by all means, keep us up to date on what happens in your future because we're very interested. Thank you. I will. <laughs> oh, oh, you're welcome. And I have a little gift for you when I see you next. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just like to add, Megan, thank you so much. Um, you've given us a lot of food for thought. There were some things in here that uh, in your discussion that I wasn't aware of as uh, like the crawl of the trees going uh, farther further north and the fact that we need to think of more hardwoods when we're planting. So a lot of food for thought and and we really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I found it very enjoyable and thank you, Megan. I'm glad. I really appreciate the time being here. So talk about your branch. (laughs) (laughs) Unrefined. It's it's slow going. Um, it's a lot of younger women with children. So we kind of are strapped for time where we do small things here and there. We do a, right now, kind of what we have on the go, we have a bin that's um, all donated baby items that are gently used, lots of blankets and things like that. Um, it's going to be kind of a rolling bin. You give it to one person, they take what they need put back what they don't, give it to the next person. Uh, We're also doing the same with women's clothing. And then we tried a book club that didn't work. We're all too busy for that. (laughs) And we, what else have we done? Uh, Right now we're working on trying to find a space for children to play with to play some music and do some movement and then also have babysitters and then the women can just like go over here and enjoy themselves <laughs> and then also get to know your babysitter because sometimes I think in this day and age it's really nice to um, have a few conversations with a babysitter before you let them in your home all supervised. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there is an FWIC book club that meets once a month that is great. If, yeah. If anybody's interested in that. Hmm. Yeah. But and that's interesting because I know Ontario's trying to get um, an online um, WI going. So, yeah, be interesting. I, I wanted to ask a question on the book club because I was, but one girl wanted to join your next meeting because of the book that you read. And Anne-Marie said, I'll just send you my link. 
But I said, you better ask the ladies because that might not work, sharing a link. So if you could answer that, then that would help. Mm -hmm. I um, guess that would be for Margaret then. I don't know who, who can answer the question, but Anne Marie sent her link to um, this lady. Myrtle. Think, no, Myrtle. no, it wasn't Myrtle, Barb. Okay. Oh, and, no, no, no. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And because she loved, because, oh, it was something to do with uh, Maud Montgomery. Society. She, yeah. She was a member of the Lucy Maud Montgomery Society. But we could share that um, book link with anybody, isn't it? It's an open group. Mm -hmm. Lynn saying yes. Yes, yes you can share that. Absolutely. Sorry, go ahead, Lynn. No, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm nodding because yes, you can share it. So <laughs> as long as you don't put it in a public posted, but you're welcome to share the link for any okay. of our events um, that you okay. want to. Yeah, so that's and, between members. Yeah, and between, well, yes. Tomorrow and tomorrow yeah. night's the next book, right, Angela? So what's Robert, yes, that's correct. Robert it's Munch a, is tomorrow night. So yes, it's the uh, um, hist not history, but the um, autobiography. Biography. Yeah, yeah. You can also find uh, information on how to join the book club on the FWIC website under upcoming events. There's the contact information. What's coming up next? And there we go. Kind of what's, off topic, but no, 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 it's good information to share. Nope. And the next book is The Women Talking, isn't it, Angela, for May? Yeah, yes, that's correct. I see Liz has her hand up. Yes, I do. Um, I've got to give credit to Megan for start being involved in a virtual branch and that there are young women in there. Uh, as some of you might know, Manitoba does also have a virtual branch. But it's right now it's made up of members that are not associated with the in-person branches, if you want to call it, because they're sort of individual members. So we've been going since last fall. So um, actually the branch put in two resolutions for this uh, upcoming AGM. So I, I give uh, kudos to, to Megan for being involved in a virtual group. Yes. And that they're yes. young. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was my my whole yeah. <laughs> comment. It's it's young. like planting trees. You have to start with the young ones and then they grow and they blossom. <laughs> yeah, the saplings. <laughs> As I say, bring a bar in, you'll get the young people. That's how <laughs> that well, that's the first WI I started with. We met in a bar. That was our um place and it was it's worked great, and it's again the young people, not exclusively, but yeah. That's the the women inspiring women. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was a I, great first meeting. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I see Barbara Weiss has her hand up. Okay, I was just going to say to Megan, if you're looking for mother taught type programs. I, in Ontario, the public libraries are a great place to start. Some of the early year centers do that too, but um, the li libraries tend to have them. Um, could be crafts. If there's a demand and there's somebody to do it, which is often the challenge, they do do a lot of music and movement programs mm -hmm. for children. Uh, sometimes they're mother taught in or action but quite often the library staff take the children and moms get to hang out or have a program or whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah we we have lots of like library crafts or like book readings but okay. there's not and they even do like puppet shows and things like that but i don't in our area specifically too it's very rural there's there's no in, in Woodstock, which is about 30 minutes away from me, they have like a gymnasium that they have set up with like mm -hmm. bounce things for kids. But there's no like kind of more structured music emphasis on instruments. And that was really mm -hmm. kind of what my kids love it. We have a person who does it for my daycare with my kids. Mm -hmm. And literally, like my my daughter will like cry on her way to daycare most mm -hmm. days of the week. 
<laughs> but if it is a music day, she she's the first one out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just goes to show you what those enriched programs do for the young people. For sure. Mm. So I see we're coming up on the hour. But before we go, I just like to let you know about a couple of uh, upcoming events. So mark your calendars for July the 11th is the FWIC AGM will be held hybrid. So there will be on site in, in uh, St. George, Ontario, and we will be uh, live on Zoom as well. And save the date, September 17th, 18th and 19th in 2024 in Truro, Nova Scotia. More details to come. So save those dates, please. Yeah. Lynn, did you want to add anything? Well, what I was thinking about is if they have any suggestions about what kind of presentations um, you would like to see next year, um, what is of interest, what's of value, uh, we would be most interested in your input. You know, we've done a few things. We've done, what, four this year? And um, it's nice to know, you know, were these worthwhile? Did, did you learn something? How do, we, how do we promote more of this? And what is it you want us to do? We want to be doing the right kinds of things to support the members and the provinces. So any suggestions you have would be helpful. Barb, you've got your hands up, Barb Ruiz. You're muted, dear. So. Sorry, I didn't mark to take it down. <laughs> no problem. Doreen wants those dates again. So um, it's July 11th is the um, is the AGM for FWIC, WI Canada in July, our yearly meeting. And then in 2024, we're going to have a national convention um, in person. We haven't had one of those since 2018 in Winnipeg, and it will be here in lovely Nova Scotia. So mm -hmm. Canada's ocean playground. So in 2024, September the 17th through to the 19th. So, so the board may be in here ahead of time, uh, maybe the day before. And uh, we're looking at what kinds of things we can uh, offer you when you're here in Nova Scotia. So. Great. I think Sheila's got a chat in there. Chat there. What would your friend talk about, Sheila? Uh, oh dear, I should have mentioned this when she was still here. She just left. <laughs> 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 she speaks brilliantly on um, advocacy, and she she's a, a, an English woman from um, from Holland and uh, has. Um, came over immigrated with her pa parents and family when she was around three and uh, grew up in Quebec City so she's fluently bil bilingual and um, although she did go to an English school in Quebec City English um, Quebec high school but since then she has worked for the government and done lots of advocacy work for uh, people with disabilities and she is still advocating for empowerment of women in, uh, she's going to Benin. She's been to Tunisia this past year. She is a former mayor of our municipality. She is quite the gal and uh, she has been asked to speak for several um, organizations that she is um, part of here in, in Quebec. One of them being a group of women called Les Pepin, which is a French organization. And here she is an English lady. <laughs> And they wanted her to be their president. And uh, she speaks and, and, and talks in, in different uh, associations around here. So I'm sure you would find her absolutely brilliant. And I don't know, I've mentioned to her before that I would ask her to speak sometime for FWIC. I'm sure you would love her. She speaks up for people with disabilities because she does only have one arm. Mm -hmm. She has grown up with a lot of, um, what, do you, what do you call it when people are against you? Um, well, bullying and also, um, you know, disrespect. But she is 
a great woman in her own right and has managed to uh, overcome all that and has made quite the name for herself. So um, I would like to put her name forward as a, a potential speaker and I will get her CV or whatever for you to look at, see if you'd be interested in, in, uh, in having her. Sounds good. Thanks, yeah. Sheila. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Joan. <laughs> Her name's Joan Westland Eby. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably out there in Google land somewhere. Yeah. What's the last West name? Weston. Westland, W-E-S-T-L-A-N-D, oh, Eby, E-B-Y. Okay. E-B-Y. Yeah, she's probably, we can find her Googling her, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you Megan. Bye-bye. You got other Good ideas, night. send them along. Okay. Thanks, Megan. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. We're all too busy for that. <laughs> and we, what else have we done? Uh, right now we're working on trying to find a space for children to play with, to play some music and do some movement and then also have babysitters. And then the women can just like go over here and enjoy themselves. <laughs> and then also get to know your babysitter. Because sometimes I think in this day and age, it's really nice to um, have a few conversations with a babysitter before you let them in your home all supervised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is mm -hmm. an FWIC book club that meets once a month. That is great. If, yeah. If anybody's interested in that. Yeah. But and that's interesting because I know Ontario's trying to get um, an online um, WI going. So, yeah, be interesting. I, I wanted to ask a question on the book club because I was, but one girl wanted to join your next meeting because of the book that you read. And Anne Marie said, I'll just send you my link. But I said, you better ask the ladies because that might not work, sharing a link. So if you could answer that, then that would help. Mm -hmm. I guess um, that would be for Margaret then. I don't know who, who can answer the question, but Anne-Marie sent her link to um, this lady. Myrtle. Think, no, Myrtle. no, it wasn't Myrtle, Barb. Okay. Oh, and, no, no, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, and because she loved, because, oh, it was something to do with uh, Maud Montgomery. Society. She, yeah, she was a member of the Lucy Maud Montgomery Society. But we could share that um, book link with anybody, isn't it? It's an open group. Mm -hmm. Lynn saying yes? Yes, yes you can share that. Absolutely. Sorry, go ahead, Lynn. No, no, that's fine. I'm I'm nodding because yes, you can share it. So as long as you don't put it in a public post it, but you're welcome to share the links for any okay. of our events um, that you okay. want to. Yeah, so and between members. Yeah, and between well, yes. Tomorrow and tomorrow yeah. night's the next book, right, Angela? So what's yes, Robert, that's correct. Robert it's Munch a, is tomorrow night. So yes, it's the uh hist not history, but the um autobiography. Biography. Yeah. Yeah. You can also find uh, information on how to join the book club on the FWIC website under upcoming events. There's the contact information, what's coming up next. Okay, there we go. Kind of off topic, but. No, 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 it's good information to share. Oh. And the next book is The Women Talking, isn't it, a Angela, for May? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. I see Liz has her hand up. Yes, I do. Um, I've got to give credit to Megan for start being involved in a virtual branch and that there are young women in there. Uh, as some of you might know, Manitoba does also have a virtual branch, but it's right now it's made up of members that are not associated with the in-person branches, if you want to call it, because they're sort of individual members. So we've been going since last fall. So um, actually, the branch put in two resolutions for this uh, upcoming AGM. So 
I, I give uh, kudos to, to Megan for being involved in a virtual group. Yes. And that they're young. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was my my whole yeah. <laughs> comment. It's it's young. like planting trees. You have to start with the young ones and then they grow and they blossom. <laughs> yeah, the saplings. <laughs> As I say, bring a bar in, you'll get the young people. That's how <laughs> that, well, that's the first WI I started with. We met in a bar. That was our um place and it was it's worked great and it's again the young people not exclusively but yeah that's the the women inspiring women yes yep yeah mm -hmm. it was a I, great first meeting yeah. yes it was yeah yeah i see barbara weiss has her hand up okay i was just going to say to megan if you're looking for mother taught type programs I, in Ontario, the public libraries are a great place to start. Some of the early year centers do that too, but um, the li libraries tend to have them. Um, could be crafts. If there's a demand and there's somebody to do it, which is often the challenge, they do do a lot of music and movement programs mm -hmm. for children. Uh, sometimes their mother taught in or action but quite often the library staff take the children and moms get to hang out or have a program or whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah we we have lots of like library crafts or like book readings but there's not and they even do like puppet shows and things like that but i don't in our area specifically too it's very rural there's there's no in, in Woodstock, which is about 30 minutes away from me, they have like a gymnasium that they have set up with like bounce mm -hmm. things for kids. But there's no like kind of more structured music emphasis on instruments. And that was really mm -hmm. kind of what my kids mm -hmm. love it. We have a person who does it for my daycare with my kids. Mm -hmm. And literally, like my my daughter will like cry on her way to daycare most mm -hmm. days of the week. <laughs> But if it is a music day, she she's the first one out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just goes to show you what those enriched programs do for the young people. For sure. Mm. So I see we're coming up on the hour. But before we go, I just like to let you know about a couple of uh, upcoming events. So mark your calendars for July the 11th is the FWIC AGM will be held hybrid. So there will be on-site in, in uh, St. George, Ontario, and we will be uh, live on Zoom as well. And save the date, September 17th, 18th and 19th in 2024 in Truro, Nova Scotia, more details to come. So save those dates, please. Yeah. Lynn, did you want to add anything? Well, what I was thinking about is if they have any suggestions about what kind of presentations um, you would like to see next year, um, what is of interest, what's of value, uh, we would be most interested in your input. You know, we've done a few things. We've done, what, four this year, and um, it's nice to know, you know, were these worthwhile? Did, did you learn something? How do we how do we promote more of this? And what is it you want us to do? We want to be doing the right kinds of things to support the members and the provinces. So any suggestions you have would be helpful. Barb, you've got your hands up, Barb Ruiz. You're muted, dear, so. Sorry, I didn't mark to take it down. <laughs> No problem. Doreen wants those dates again. So um, it's July 11th is the um, is the AGM for FWIC, WI Canada in July, our yearly meeting. And then in 2024, we're going to have a national convention um, in person. We haven't had one of those since 2018 in Winnipeg. And it will be here in lovely Nova Scotia. So mm -hmm. Canada's Ocean Playground. So in 20, 
24, September the 17th through to the 19th. So, so the board may be in here ahead of time, uh, maybe the day before. And uh, we're looking at what kinds of things we can uh, offer you when you're here in Nova Scotia. So. Great. I think Sheila's got a chat in there. Chat there. What would your friend talk about, Sheila? Uh, oh, dear. I should have mentioned this when she was still here. She just left. <laughs> 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 she speaks brilliantly on um, advocacy. And she she's a, a, an English woman from, um, from Holland and uh, has... Uh, came over immigrated with her pa parents and family when she was around three and uh, grew up in Quebec City so she's fluently bi bilingual and um, although she did go to an English school in Quebec City English um, Quebec high school but since then she has worked for the government and done lots of advocacy work for uh, people with disabilities and she is still advocating for empowerment of women in uh, she's going to Benin. She's been to Tunisia this past year. She is a former mayor of our municipality. She is quite the gal and uh, she has been asked to speak for several um, organizations that she is um, part of here in, in Quebec. One of them being a group of women called Les Pépines which is a French organization and here she is an English lady <laughs> and they wanted her to be their president. And uh, she speaks and, and, and talks in, in different uh, associations around here. So I'm sure you would find her absolutely brilliant. And I don't know, I've mentioned to her before that I would ask her to speak sometime for FWIC. I'm sure you would love her. She speaks up for people with disabilities because she does only have one arm she has grown up with a lot of um, what do you what do you call it when people are against you um, well bullying and also um, you know disrespect but she is a great woman in her own right and has managed to uh, overcome all that and has made quite the name for herself so um, I would like to put her name forward as a, a potential speaker and I will get her CV or whatever for you to look at, see if you'd be interested in, in, uh, in having her. Sounds good. Thanks, yeah. Sheila. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> You're welcome, Joan. <laughs> her name's Joan Westland Eby. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably out there in Google land somewhere. Yeah. What's the last well, name? Weston? Westland, W E S T L A N D, oh, E B okay. E B Y. E B Y. Yeah, she's probably, we can find her Googling her. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Megan. Bye bye. You got other ideas, send them along. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Megan. Thank you. Doreen wants those dates again. So um, it's July 11th is the um, is the AGM for FWIC, WI Canada in July, our yearly meeting. And then in 2024, we're going to have a national convention um, in person. We haven't had one of those since 2018 in Winnipeg. And it will be here in lovely Nova Scotia. So... Mm -hmm. Canada's Ocean Playground. So in 2024, September the 17th through to the 19th. So, so the board may be in here ahead of time, uh, maybe the day before. And uh, we're looking at what kinds of things we can uh, offer you when you're here in Nova Scotia. So. Great. I think Sheila's got a chat in there. There. What would your friend talk about, Sheila? Uh, oh dear, I should have mentioned this when she was still here. She just left. <laughs> <laughs> she speaks brilliantly on um, advocacy, and she she's a, a, an English woman from um, from Holland, and uh, has uh, came over, immigrated with her pa parents and family when she was around three. 
and uh, grew up in Quebec City, so she's fluently bilingual. And um, although she did go to an English school in Quebec City, English um, Quebec High School, but since then she has worked for the government and done lots of advocacy work for uh, people with disabilities. And she is still advocating for empowerment of women in, uh, she's going to Benin. She's been to Tunisia this past year. She is a former mayor of our municipality. She is quite the gal and uh, she has been asked to speak for several um, organizations that she is um, part of here in, in Quebec. One of them being a group of women called Les Pépin, which is a French organization. And here she is an English lady <laughs> and they wanted her to be their president. And uh, she speaks and, and, and talks in, in different uh, associations around here. So I'm sure you would find her absolutely brilliant. And I don't know, I've mentioned to her before that I would ask her to speak sometime for FWIC. I'm sure you would love her. She speaks up for people with disabilities because she does only have one arm. Mm -hmm. She has grown up with a lot of, um, what, do you, what do you call it when people are against you? Um, well, bullying and also, um, you know, disrespect. But she is a great woman in her own right and has managed to uh, overcome all that and has made quite the name for herself. So um, I would like to put her name forward as a, a potential speaker and I will get her CV or whatever for you to look at, see if you'd be interested in in, uh, in having her. Sounds good. Thanks, yeah. Sheila. Yeah. You're welcome. You. <laughs> You're welcome, Joan. Her <laughs> 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 name Joan Westland Eby. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably out there in Google land somewhere. Yeah. What's the last oh. name? Weston. Westland, W-E-S-T-L-A-N-D, oh, E-B-Y. Okay. E -B -Y. E -B -Y. Yeah, she's probably, we can find her Googling her. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you Megan. Bye-bye. You got other Good ideas, night. send them along. Okay. Thanks, Megan. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.